Hello, and welcome to another Elliston Liddell Radio Mystery. Once again, Interesting Theater whisks you back to the year 1908, at the height of Manitoba's first golden age, a time when people from around the world flocked to Winnipeg to experience what many regarded as a miracle. Somehow, a modern metropolis had sprung up on the empire's remotest frontier, where just mere decades before, there had been only windswept prairie. And now from the annals of that famous author and detective, the Reverend Ellison Liddell, interesting theater presents the case that he called All Made of Sighs and Tears. But before we begin, hear this. This fall, the Congregation of Young United Church will celebrate our 129th anniversary. A lot has changed since we first opened our doors, this neighborhood, this city, the world. Yet through it all, one thing has remained constant. The whole idea of serving Jesus by feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and healing the sick has always been very real here. For us, that's what Christian ministry is about. Caring for people who otherwise wouldn't be cared for. Just seeing that the work gets done. For the safety of our congregation and staff, our building is currently closed. But once the crisis has passed, why not drop by on a Sunday morning and get to know us a little better? Services are at 11 and the address 222 Furby Street in Winnipeg. In the meantime, you can find us on Facebook or at youngunitedchurch.com, where you can sign up for our virtual services and daily reflect reflection emails. Young United Church is sponsoring this broadcast in support of our ongoing work in the West Broadway neighborhood, which is currently focused on helping provide food and security for those in need. Contributions of $10 or more made through our secure website or by check mailed to the church office are eligible for a tax receipt. Every dollar helps, so please be generous. Thank you. And now, Act One of All Made of Sighs and Tears, an Elliston Liddell Radio Mystery. All right, Crittenden, rise and shine, you got a visitor. What? What time is it? Uh, don't hardly matter in jail now, do it? Hands. Oh, come now, Sapansky. Do I really need handcuffs? I'm hardly going to escape. No, oh, you'd be surprised. All right. Out. So, who has decided to interrupt my slumber at this ungodly hour, my so-called barrister? Well, that ain't none of my concern. In here. Hello, Mr. Crittenden. M Marino, no, uh, Sapetsky, get me out of here. Ah, uh, shut up, Crittenden. A hundred bucks, you said? Yeah, there you are. Your guard's uniform is on that chair, Mr. Crittenden. If you'd be so good to go... You're, you're, you're uh, breaking me out? Why? Uh, where are you planning to... Oh, hey, don't you ever shut up. Put it on. Okay. Things are arranged at the gate. Yeah. Evans here is getting off early because he's sick. He'll have no problems. And for your sake, we had better not. Very well, Sapansky. You may go. Why? Why are you doing this? Why? Why out of the goodness of our hearts, Mr. Crittenden? The very milk of human kindness. You see, despite your ineptitude at swindling the good burgers of Winnipeg, you at least tried to raise the money you owe us. Plus, you showed a certain animal cunning in dispatching Winston Stewart uh, when the opportunity presented itself. And for that, uh, Mr. Gazetti has decided to give you one last chance to settle your debt. So come along. We have a train to catch. <laughs> I do wish 
wish you'd reconsider, Pamela. Elliston, we've been over and over this. The suffrage convention has invited me to deliver its keynote address. It's an enormous honor and one I will not decline simply because it doesn't conform to your schedule. But if you could just delay a few more days, I could come with you. Why, Elliston? There's a full week of work to do, contacts to be made, or have you changed your mind about supporting my political ambitions? Well, no, no, of course not. Then what is it? Ever since the incident at Cooper's Brewery, you've become fearful. You were almost killed. Again? Yes. Does it occur to you, Elliston, that I might be safer away from you? I beg your pardon? Oh, Elliston, I am taking an important business trip to Toronto. You are presiding at an equally important Methodist conclave here in Winnipeg. Neither schedule is subject to change. <sighs> You've told me that I'm more than simply the wife of the famous Elliston Liddell, that you're proud that I can be my own person as well. If that's so, this is something that will occur regularly in the course of our marriage. You see that, surely? All aboard! Yes, of course. It, it, it's just... What, Elliston? Nothing. I can see you won't be dissuaded. Safe journey, Pamela. Thank you, Elliston. I'll return on the 12th. So, Arnold, what am I going to do with you? Look, uh, uh, Mr. Gazzetti, I, I thought about this a lot on the trip here. Uh, Marino says you people are after uh, Phoebe Johnston. Is, is that right? Correct. Mrs. Johnston introduced us to some uh, investments that turned out to be, shall we say, less than on the up and up. You know what I'm saying? Oh, oh I understand perfectly. I know you do. You worked the same scam for her in Winnipeg. Am I right? Yes. Well, our problem, as I'm sure Marino here explained, is that Phoebe has disappeared with our money. We're pretty sure she ain't blown town, but we can't find where she's holed up. You, you don't have to. I can, I, I can make her come out. So Marino tells me. So? What's your play? Uh, on the train, I, I noticed this. I circled the piece. The social pages? What are you trying to pull? Nothing, nothing, I swear. Just read it. Mrs. Elliston Liddell, wife of the famous author, is gracing our fair city this week. Mrs. Liddell will be stopping at the King Edward while she attends the annual Women's Suffrage Association Conference. So? You say you, you can't find Phoebe. I, I'm not surprised. She, she's very resourceful, but she does have a, a, a weakness. Pamela Liddell. <laughs> my, my Arnold. That sounds personal. The Liddells are responsible for my uh, reversal of fortune, uh, but, but that doesn't affect this plan. I guarantee Phoebe will come out for Pamela Liddell and, uh, and vice versa. Oh, I get it. We send this Liddell dame an invite that looks like it comes from Phoebe, and then grab her when she shows. Well, that's the start of it. If Phoebe knows you're looking for her... <laughs> I guarantee she does. Well, then she won't come out in the open, even for Pamela Liddell. But if we were to grab Mrs. Liddell... That's it. If Phoebe thinks Pamela is in danger, then she'll come out 
so we put Ladell on ice. Ah, uh, let Phoebe know we have her. How? Oh, uh, an ad in the personal section should do nicely. Former employee seeks meeting with the financial lady over a lost item. Something like that. Once she knows it's me, then... She'll have no choice. I like it. So we get Phoebe and you get Liddell. Lollipops all around. This works and we might leave you the dame as well as cancel your debt. Oh, oh it'll work. Good. Because if it don't, we run a very fine and private graveyard out in Lake Ontario. You know what I'm saying? Will there be anything else, ladies? I believe I'll have another port waiter. Letitia? I should, but yes, a port would be lovely. Thank you. Oh, at once. We just won't mention this to my Christian Temperance Union colleagues at the convention. Temperance is not prohibition, as Elliston says. Oh. I take it your relationship is experiencing a rough patch. To put it mildly, oh, Letitia, married less than a year and already our lives seem to be moving in different directions. It hardly seems possible. Well, every marriage has times like this. It will pass, I'm sure. I do hope you're right. Oh, thank you, waiter. Your health, Letitia. And yours, my dear. I take it the events at Cooper's Brewery have proven problematic? Alliston has not taken well to my being shot at. Lately, he's barely able to let me out of his sight. Well, understandable, surely. Actually, it's not. We've been in danger before, and we've always been able to put it behind us. This time. Letitia, Elliston has encouraged me to be independent, to go out and learn about myself, discover my abilities. It's why I accepted this invitation. But now, suddenly, he wants me home, protected, swaddled like a porcelain doll. One can hardly fault a husband for wanting to keep his wife safe. Of course I want him to look out for me, as I him. One of the joys of being married to Elliston has been the sense of partnership. That when we faced adversity, we've done it together, as equals. But lately... Well, perhaps he is coming to realize just how dangerous his hobby can be. It often takes marriage to make a man see his life in a different light. I have no doubt there's truth in that. But his solution is not to stop accepting cases, but to keep me from joining him. Phoebe would never treat me this way. Phoebe? A very interesting woman I met on our honeymoon. It's a long story. She was involved in solving the Stuart Chocolates case. Independent, brilliant, morally ambiguous. And dangerous, if I could recall the newspaper accounts. Undoubtedly, as Arnold Crittenden can attest, but loyal. I see. And still, no matter how close you become, a friend is not a spouse. This Phoebe cannot have as much invested in your welfare as Alistair. I know. But he's shutting me out, Letitia. It's so... I've been having a nightmare of late and sitting in our parlor when Josie shows Inspector O'Connell in. They both just stand there, staring at me. I don't know why. Then they step apart and Elliston is lying on the floor behind them in a pool of blood. And then they start moaning like some demented Greek chorus. You weren't there. You weren't there. It's horrid. Nice. Oh. Have you talked to Elliston about this? He can't, won't, see anything wrong with trying to keep me hidden from any sort of danger. Well, I won't stand for it. I won't. 
Perhaps it's just as well you're spending some time apart. A perfectly normal trip where nothing untoward happens may be just what's needed for both of you. I truly hope so. I do so love him, Letitia. I detest being at odds about this. Anything else, Reverend Liddell? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. No, I suppose not. Are you all right, sir? You seem out of sorts. Um, sit down, Josie. Tell me, did Mrs. Liddell say anything to you before she left for Toronto? About what, Reverend Liddell? Well, we've, uh, we've had something of a disagreement. Oh, that. You knew? Reverend Liddell, <laughs> it's my job to know everything that goes on in this house. I see. Well? If it's advice you're looking for, despite all you've been through together, you're still newlyweds, Reverend Liddell. Married, what, nine months? Honestly, you scarcely know each other yet. Of course there will be little frictions, especially with two personalities as strong as yours. All perfectly normal to my way of thinking. Mm. I suppose you're right. Of course I am. You'll see. When Mrs. Adele gets back, everything will be right as rain. I don't think I'm in the mood for guests, Josie. Tell whoever it is to, uh... Elliston. James, what is it? It's Arnold Crittenden. He's escaped. What? When? Three days ago. I was at the Regina test. I was in Regina testifying at the Sloan trial. Oh, so no one thought to inform you. No. Will you take coffee, Inspector? Uh, something a little stronger, I'm thinking. Brandy, Josie. And one for me as well. All right, James. From the beginning. Walked out right under our noses. A guard's uniform. An inside job, but the blaggard's not talking. Either the money's too good, or his family's at risk. But who? Mr. Crittenden has no friends in Winnipeg. I'm, I'm sure of that. We're thinking one of the crime families in Toronto may have been involved. But why would they... If Crittenden owes them money, they would have just had him killed. So they need him for something else. But what? We've no idea. But that's not why I came. An informer told us that Crittenden talked constantly about taking revenge on the women who put him in jail. Good Lord in heaven. We think Crittenden headed for Toronto, but just to be safe, I've assigned guards to Louisa Stewart, and I've brought men along with me for Pamela. She's not here, James. Th then where? No. Josie! She's staying at the King Edward. You'll arrange for a guard there? Of course. Yes, Reverend Liddell? I need a ticket to Toronto. Next available train. No, two tickets. Tell Yerzy to get ready. Mrs. Liddell? Maybe in danger, yes. Make that three tickets, Josie. This is not your fault, James. Oh, it doesn't matter, Elliston. I'm coming, and there's an end of it. Thank you. Thank you all. Was it all right? All right? Listen to them. You'll be chairwoman before the week is up. I guarantee it. Mrs. Ellison Liddell. Paging, Mrs. Ellison Liddell. Here, I'm Pamela Liddell. I have a telegram for you, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, how wonderful. What is it, Pamela? It's from the friend I mentioned on the train, Phoebe Johnston. She saw in the paper I was in Toronto and wants to meet for a late luncheon. Letitia, I'm supposed to be in a workshop this afternoon. Could you take notes for me? Certainly, my dear. Think nothing of it. I'll see you at dinner? Of course. Thank you, Letitia. Meeting a woman named Phoebe Johnston. Please bring it to me when she arrives. Of course, madam. And shall I pour your tea? Yes, thank you. And will there be anything else while you wait? I think not, no. Very good, madam. Well, Phoebe, what stories will you have for me this time? Well, Drugs in the tea. Any moment now, Dr. Crittenden. Oh, what? What? Waiter? Waiter, I, I feel, oh. Madam? M Madam? Uh, a, a doctor? Is there a doctor here? I am a doctor. Ah, what seems to be the problem? Uh, why this lady, Doctor? Uh, she's just collapsed. Yeah, uh, let me see. Hmm. Hmm. My surgery is nearby. Waiter, have my car brought around. You two, here, help her to her feet. Carefully now. Carefully. Waiter, show them the way. Of, of course, sir. Uh, this way, if you please. She'll be all right, Doctor. Oh, I think so. When a woman refuses to accept that the female constitution is completely unsuited to serious work outside the home, here's the result. <laughs> I'll give her a sleeping draft and call for her husband to collect her. Good day. She's in the car. Good. Uh, your driver knows the address? Of course. Here's the drug. Give her a shot every six hours and you'll have no trouble with her. All right. Now, a discreet ad in the personals column, and then we wait for Phoebe to walk, walk right into our trap. Yes, sight and this will work. Since my life depends upon it. <laughs> yes, yes. If you'd ever seen them together, Marino, you'd know there is no doubt, none. Just have your men in place and I'll hand it to you on a silver platter. to any of your messages. I am given to understand Miss Liddell did not return last evening. But she hasn't checked out. Oh, oh no. Her luggage and belongings are still with us. I have the maid check. Very well, thank you. Where are you, Pamela? You're hardly the type for an all-night party, even if there were such a thing in Toronto. Excuse me, but I couldn't help it over here. You're looking for Pamela Liddell? And you are? Letitia Roxton. I traveled here with Pamela for the suffrage conference. Phoebe Johnston, have you any idea where I might find her? I'd ask you the same question. I? Whatever for? Well, she left the conference yesterday afternoon to have lunch with you. I beg your pardon? She received a telegram from you inviting her to join you. Curious. Did I mention where this luncheon was to take place? Pamela didn't tell me. 
So you haven't seen her? No. I'm sure it was just a miscommunication. I'll let you know should she contact me. Now you really must excuse me. I have another engagement. But I... Good day, Mrs. Roxton. Oh, Pamela, what have you gotten yourself into now? Number, please. I'd like the long-distance operator. One moment, please. Long distance. I want to speak to the Reverend Elliston Liddell in Winnipeg. His residence, please. One moment, please. I'll place that call. Name, please. Phoebe Johnston. One moment, please. Liddell residence. I have a call for the Reverend Elliston Liddell from a Phoebe Johnston. Will you accept the charges? Yes, operator. Very well. You may proceed. Hello, Josie. Reverend Liddell is not here. Is there anything else, Mrs. Johnston? Josie, I'm afraid you'll have to save your well-deserved venom for another time. Has Pamela contacted you yesterday or today? She has not. Why? She seems to be missing. Where is Elliston? Oh, my heavens. The Reverend and Inspector O'Connell left for Toronto yesterday afternoon. They should be there in the morning. Toronto? Why? Arnold Crittenden escaped from jail. They think he is in Toronto. And, and wants revenge on Pamela for thwarting his plans at Stuart Chocolates. Oh, fine. Marvelous. Are you going to wait for them? Arnold has some very unpleasant acquaintances here. Elliston and the inspector can catch up when they get here. Thank you, Josie. But... Well, Arnold, since it's always about money with you, what's going on in your twisted little mind? Ransom? Yes, that would be your style especially if you know I'm here. There's a scandal on city council. Read all about it in the Mail and Empire. Boy, paper over here. Elliston. This is Inspector Hargraves of the Toronto Constabulary. Michael, this is Reverend Elliston Liddell and his man Yerji Kaczynski. Oh, an honor to make your acquaintance, Reverend Liddell. Your books give me and the missus a great deal of enjoyment. Uh, please have a seat. Thank you, Inspector. You'll forgive me if I'm somewhat peremptory, but... Oh, no apologies needed, Reverend Liddell. I, I understand it, Tyler. Well then, where does the investigation stand, Michael? Well, Mrs. Letitia Roxton was the last person to see Mrs. Liddell. She stated that Mrs. Liddell received a telegram at the conference they've been attending here. A telegram? From whom? Well, according to Mrs. Roxton, it was from a uh, Phoebe Johnston. Phoebe? You, you know this person? Mrs. Johnston is my wife's dearest friend. And a formidable woman of uh, questionable character. I beg your pardon? But not a suspect. Both James and I can assure you that Phoebe would do nothing to harm Pamela in any way. Quite the opposite, in fact. Ah, well, that, that would explain why no office in the city has a record of a telegram from Mrs. Liddell. Uh, it was counterfeit then. So it would seem. An unusual ploy, but not entirely unheard of. Mm, and bloody effective in this case. Oh, indeed. So, where was this luncheon supposed to be? Well, Mrs. Liddell didn't say. However, we found a cabbie using took a woman matching your wife's description to the Royal York. This, unfortunately, is where the trail has gone cold. Cold? Cold? Dear Lord in Heaven, isn't it obvious? Pamela became ill at the restaurant, a doctor was summoned, and now there is no trace of either of them. What? How could you possibly know that? Oh, never you mind, Michael. Tis just what Elliston does. And the doctor? A tall, 30s, uh, upper class accent. Crittenden! Oh, sure if it ain't. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Elliston. Arnold Crittenden? The escapee? That's the one. This man has made threats against my wife, Inspector. He is a murderer, a man without scruples. We must find him. Oh, we will, Reverend Liddell. Now that we know who we're looking for. There is one other thing, Inspector. Yes? As James has undoubtedly told you, Mr. Crittenden must have had outside help in his escape. One of your crime families may be involved. But I can think of no reason why Toronto gangsters would have any interest in kidnapping my wife. You rich man, Reverend Boss. Sure, that's true, Yerji. But there's been no ransom note. Ransom? Why would they break out Crittenden unless... It's someone else, James. I'm sure of it. Pamela is just the bait. Oh, then the real target is... Bibi. And she'll know Pamela is here as well. Holy mother of God. She'll try it, won't she? Without a doubt. James, get Phoebe's description to Inspector Hargreaves' people as soon as possible. Have I missed something? Ah, uh, Michael, it's just that you don't know Phoebe Johnston. If we don't find her first, Inspector, she will attempt a rescue. And that could get them both killed. Oh, holy mother of God. No, leave me. Oh, belt up, or I'll have or to... Or what, Arnold? Phoebe, how did, how did you get in? You invited me, remember? Former employee seeks meeting with financial lady over lost item. Now get away from her, Arnold. Why should I? Don't know how you got past them, but... You can't shoot without alerting my friends downstairs, old girl. So toss away the gun or I'll drive this syringe right through Pamela's pretty brown eye. The next one will be the center of your forehead, Arnold. Now drop it and get away from Pamela. What, what are you going to do? Less than you deserve. Tie your ankles together. You, you, you'll never get away with it. Uh, the building is surrounded. And yet, here I am. With you involved in the planning, I shouldn't imagine leaving will be much more difficult. All right, on your stomach, arms behind your back. Pamela, are you all right? Who? What? She can't hear you. Drugged, you see. Now how will you escape, old girl? If you really want me to hurt you, Arnold, just keep talking. There. Pamela, darling, it's me, Phoebe. P Phoebe? Who? My God, you swine! What have you done to her? The sleep. It was just to keep her asleep. Don't! 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 Please! Why, you sniveling little coward? Why? No! No! Gazzetti, it, it was Gazzetti. Of course it was. I swindled him and now he wants me dead. But Pamela, that was you, wasn't it, Arnold? But it was the only way I, I could think of to... No, Arnold, you wanted to hurt her. Hurt both of us. For showing people what a disgusting excuse for a human being you really are. Well, that's not going to happen. Come on, darling, up you get. Can you walk? Walk? Walk. Yes. Good girl. Then it's time to leave. Wait, Phoebe. You can't. You can't leave me like this. Gisetti will kill yes, me. Yes, he will. And if he doesn't, I will find you and do the job myself. After I've removed your clearly superfluous manhood. No, no. You can't. You can't, you... <sighs> Waste of a perfectly good handkerchief. All right, darling. Out onto the landing. That's it. Now just one flight to the roof, then down the other side of the building to the car. 
That's it, darling. That's it. You're doing fine. Pamela's been missing for three days now. Are you sure this is the right place, Inspector? Yes, Reverend Odell. My beat constable identified Crittenden's picture at the station this morning. He's positive it's the man he saw coming in here last night. I know this is hard, Elliston, but we're closing in now. Have heart. I'm trying, James. Oh, dear Lord in heaven, I beseech thee. Please, please let her be safe. Mulligan. Kaczynski, are you ready? Yes, sir. Good. Reverend Liddell, you stay back until we've made the room safe. All right, lads. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Toronto Constabulary! It's empty, sir. No. Wait. Over here. What? Oh my God! What is it? Oh, Crittenden. No. Oh. May God have mercy on his soul. Trust and slaughtered like a prize hog. Oh, he was a nasty piece of work, but sure nobody should die like that. All right, men. Check everything. The bed is too short to be Crittenden's. <laughs> She was here, James. I can still smell her perfume on the pillow. So not too long gone, then. Is something here, Reverend Boss? Let me see, Irzy. As we thought, James, a note in the personal circled and this address written down. A woman's hand. Left-handed, I should say. Hmm. This Phoebe Johnston? Since the advertisement was intended for her and... She is left-handed, I, I should think so. Yes. So, she killed Crittenden? I, I don't think so. Oh, if it was self-defense, there's no doubt she's capable, but, oh, to butcher a man like that? Oh, nah. Elliston, are you all right, Elliston? Why haven't they come to the police? Look at the blood, James, completely congealed. He's been dead for hours, maybe a day. They've had plenty of time. Where are they? Oh, Pamela. Alliston, I... Now, now see here, Reverend Liddell. I know this is a difficult time, but let's look at the facts. We agreed Mrs. Johnson was here. Yet Inspector O'Connell says she's unlikely to have killed Crittenden in this manner. The method does, however, fit with what his gangster friends do on a regular basis, especially the people who have disappointed them in some way. So what if Mrs. Johnston arrived first? Is she capable of overcoming a man like Britain? Oh, Phoebe? Oh, sure, Michael. Oh, if she surprised him, oh, he wouldn't have stood a chance. So they could have escaped before the others arrived? But Pamela would still be trying to contact me, even if Phoebe was... Wait. Of course. What, Reverend Liddell? This. The syringe? You'll find whatever Arnold used at the Royal York is also in that syringe. He was keeping Pamela drugged while he waited for Phoebe. But she outsmarted him and then managed to get Pamela out. But... Mrs. Pamela still have drug and body. Exactly. Inspector, I know Phoebe. She would never have attempted this without a plan. She must have a place where they can hide while Pamela recovers. But where, Reverend Liddell? Your men did an admirable job in finding this place, Inspector. I urge you to see that they are equally efficient in this new search. But it's Phoebe we're talking about here, Alistair. Uh, she's found a proper bolt hole. Agreed. 
But while criminals have, may have abandoned moral standards, James, that does not imply a universal deficiency of intelligence. If Mr. Crittenden revealed what happened here before he was killed... Look at body, Reverend Boss. He tell. Then they have the same information as we and a substantial head start. They want Phoebe, and that means Pamela is still in mortal danger. There's not a moment to lose. We will return to All Made of Sighs and Tears after a brief intermission. Once again, a reminder that Young United Church is sponsoring this broadcast in support of our ongoing work in the West Broadway neighborhood, which is currently focused on helping provide food and security for those in need. Contributions of $10 or more made through our secure website, youngunitedchurch.com, or by check mailed to the church office at 10222 Furby are eligible for a tax receipt. So please be generous. Welcome back. Well, a great deal has happened since our story began, has it not? A prison break, a kidnapping, a rescue, a murder. And always, Elliston is one step behind. For him, very unfamiliar territory. It's now two days later. Phoebe managed to get the semi-conscious Pamela onto a train without being detected by Gazzetti's thugs. She and Pamela are now in Ottawa, hiding in a rooming house for single working women run by a couple of old friends. And now act two of All Made of Sighs and Tears, an Elliston Liddell radio mystery. How is she, Regina? Well, the drug finally seems to be wearing off. But it was a close run thing. Whoever has been keeping her sedated didn't have a clue what he was doing. He gave her far too much. But she'll recover. It's going to take time, Phoebe. In all my years of nursing, I've never seen anything quite like it. Who is she, by the way? She doesn't seem to know. She's. Her name is Abigail Harrison. We're together. Finally seen the light! Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yes. Well, she got involved with some very nasty people in Toronto. I got us out of town by the skin of our teeth. I'm hoping we can stay here until things settle a bit. Oh, that's no problem, my dear. Stay as long as you need to. That's most kind. It's nothing. Lord knows you've helped Constance and me enough in the past. However... Yes? I have to warn you, when I say Abigail doesn't know who she is, well, that may not be a temporary condition. Physically, she's recovering satisfactorily, but her memory, it appears to be another matter altogether. You're going to have to be patient. She may not be able to recall anything about her past, even who you are. She'll be a bit of a tabula rasa. She'll be depending on you to fill in those blanks. Oh, my. I know it's going to take a lot to take in, but you could count on Constance and I to do everything we can to help. Well, Abigail will be waking up soon, I think. I'll leave you two to get reacquainted. Dinner's at seven. Thank you, Regina. Well, darling, it looks like we're stuck here for a while. I'm sorry about Abigail Harrison, but... Liddell is just too famous a name to have floating about when Gazzetti has eyes and ears everywhere. So I'm afraid your Elliston is just going to have to wait. Although, thanks to Arnold, I suppose he's not your Elliston at the moment, is he? Not quite what I had in mind when I begged you to come away with me, but... Fill in the blanks. Uh, where, where am I? Oh, God. Hush, darling. You're safe. Everything's fine. But I can't... I can't remember. It, it's all right. It, it's all right. Let's start at the beginning. My name is Phoebe Johnston. 
Uh, I'm, I'm afraid. I know, darling. I know. But I'm here. I'll always be here. I, I don't, I don't know you. You understand that? Yes, darling. I understand completely. It's my job to remember for both of us. Let's start again. I am Phoebe Johnston. Phoebe, and I? You, darling? You, your name is Abigail Harrison, and you and I are, we're in love. What? Did you say something, James? I asked. When was the last time you slept? I... Days? I am barely in control of myself, James. I let her go. She's... Oh, dear Lord in heaven. Alistair. These are the women who took down Arnold Crittenden. You've told me how they helped drag five of you to safety through a blizzard on your honeymoon. Oh, I saw them after Winston Stewart tried to kill them and failed. These are not women who need protecting Alistair. If Phoebe got them away, as it appears she has, then they're safe, at least for now. I know it. Rationally, I agree with you, old friend. But when it comes to Pamela, I'm finding reason overwhelmed by doubt. I'm afraid, James. Horribly, deathly afraid. And you have every right to be. Oh, if it were my Annie, I'd be beside myself. But even if Pamela and, Fa and Phoebe don't need protection, they'll be wanting help, sure if they won't. And that will not do by surrendering to emotion. What's called for now is clear thinking. You're right, of course. Stiff upper lip, what? Ah, uh, that's me boy -o. So, we've tracked them to Ottawa. What next? Well, Phoebe must know someone there, or she wouldn't have come. Hmm. It occurs to me she may have just switched trains and kept going. Well, we'll have to look into that, of course, but I think it unlikely. If Pamela was still under the drug's influence, Phoebe would want to get to a safe place as quickly as possible, somewhere where Pamela has time to recover. More wine, gentlemen? Oh, none for me. Elliston? I think not. <sighs> what time will we arrive at Ottawa, Steward? We're running about an hour and a half late, sir. Looks like 4.45 a.m. Hmm. And it's 10.30 now. Oh, bed soon, I'd say. Agreed. Anything else before we retire? Uh, Michael wired Pamela and Phoebe's pictures to the Ottawa Constabulary, so they'll have started canvassing hotels already. And given Pamela's condition, they should be fairly memorable. What's in the package Inspector Hargraves gave you at the platform? Uh, uh, letters of introduction, copies of pictures, and Oh, and a list of likely hotels and, oh, information on the organization Michael suspects killed Crittenden. Indeed. May I see that? Alberto Gazzetti. Hmm. Bribery, theft, drugs, protection, murder. No convictions. If this is who we're up against, my anxiety is rising again. And here's a list of apparently legitimate businesses. Oh, that's how they uh, clean their criminal earnings. Uh, you know, invest in real businesses and the dirty money disappears. Uh, washed, if you like. I see. A construction company, restaurants, an investment firm. I wonder. What is it, Ellis? Well, I've been contemplating what Phoebe has done to attract these people's attention. 
Oh, a DB scam in Winnipeg was investments. Well, so you think she ran the same scheme here? And sold to Signore Gazzetti, which based on his resume, would surely lead to a violent response. We have to find them first, James. We have to. Oh, we will, Elliston. We will. Oh. Well, long day tomorrow. Uh, try to sleep, Elliston. I'll do my best. Good night, James. Good night. Morgan, boss. You need anything more before bed? Oh, mercy. Yes, sit down. The Toronto police think this is the man who's looking for Phoebe. According to them, when he's in Ottawa, he and his gang work out of a restaurant in the Byword Market. I know this place. I thought you might. Yerji, we must know if this Gazetti has found out where Phoebe and Pamela are hiding. So you want I persuade somebody to talk? Precisely. Money is no object, but God forgive me. If money is not enough... Reverend Boss, I not let nothing happen to Mrs. Pamela. On life, I swear. I know, old friend. I know. Thank you. Yes, Regina? Could you pass the gravy, please? Oh, yes, certainly. So, Phoebe, you still haven't told us how the two of you met. Oh, it was so romantic. Uh, it was at the hot springs at Banff, wasn't it, Abigail? Um, yes. Yes, of course. She was on the massage table. Then when Inga sent her to the soaking pool, I saw her in the all together before I even knew her name. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love at first sight. Oh, Phoebe, hush. <laughs> what a charming blush. You two make such a lovely couple. Thank you, Constance. We quite agree, don't we, Abigail? Yes. Yes, we do. Regina tells me you've been in the investment business. Quite exciting to hear women can do something like that. Oh, it can be exciting. Men think they're such risk takers until they lose money. Darling, do you remember the time we had to lock ourselves in the vault to keep that drunken factory owner from trying to shoot us? Shoot you? Really? Oh, yes. He actually did graze me, but Abigail got the vault door closed and then bandaged me up in heroic fashion. How did you get out? I, uh, well, we... Uh... Oh, you remember, Abigail. When the police arrived, they discovered the man had been murdered by a disgruntled employee. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. So, what's next for the two of you? Well, we've decided that we've had enough excitement for a while. That it's time for a fresh start. Here? In Ottawa? Heavens, no. Far fresher than Canada. Tell them, darling. We're going to emigrate. To New Zealand. Oh, marvelous. Indeed. Ladies, a toast to Phoebe, Abigail, and new beginnings. May all your dreams come true. I'll drink to that. <laughs> so frustrating, Phoebe. Our life, it feels like something I've read in a novel, not something I've lived. Well, much of our life has been rather like an adventure novel. Oh, Phoebe. I'm sorry, darling. I know it's hard. Regina says it may take a long time, but she thinks you'll eventually get your memory back, most of it at least. In the meantime, we're together now. That's what really matters, don't you think? Of course, my love. Of course. 
If you hadn't found me... Water under the bridge. You're safe now. And in just a few more days, this will all be behind us, and I'll finally be able to start giving you the happiness you deserve. That we deserve... What is it, darling? I just had the oddest... Flash? Do we know anyone named El... Ellis? Who? Um, no, I don't think so. No. Now enough of this, darling. It's been a long day, and we'll want our beauty sleep if we're going to prove we're worthy of becoming New Zealanders. Come to bed. All right, you. In here. Hey, wait a minute. You said you was going to pay me. Said you be paid, not say by me. Now, in. Thank you, Yerzy. Uh, Minkoff, is it? Have a seat. Now, look here. Boss, say sit. You sit. All right, all right. Hey, take it easy. So, uh, who the hell are you? As long as I deliver the promised cash, I don't believe that's any of your concern. Now, I understand you work in Gazzetti's restaurant. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bartender, so, uh, I hear things, you know. Hmm. And what have you heard about a woman named uh, Phoebe Johnston? Oh, that name. <laughs> Took Gazzetti for something like uh, 25 grand. Didn't know it was his dough, but uh, that don't make no difference. She's dead. She just don't know it. So I take it she has not been found as yet? Nah, ain't in none of the hotels. They're still running rooming houses, but uh, it's only a matter of time. Somebody will see her. I see. Well, my problem, Minkoff, is that this woman also has something that belongs to me. Something I would like to recover before Gazzetti uh, solves his little problem. Tell me, do you suppose I could buy her, say for a substantial premium over the 25 grand? <laughs> Look, boss, I like you. So here's some free advice. Not a chance. Oh, Gazzetti, take your money. But scammed? And by a dame? <laughs> nah, he's got a safe face. And uh, the only way to do that is an example, you see? Mm, I suppose I do. Well, thank you, Minkoff. You've been most helpful. $200 was the agreed amount, I believe? Yeah, it was. And, uh, let me add another hundred as a, let's call it a retainer. Should you hear anything else you think might be of interest to me? In the meantime, of course, you won't mention our little meeting, will you? You do. Not so good for you. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Hey, hey, I get it, I get it. All right, you can go. Did you hear that, James? Oh, sure, Helliston. If that hoodlum ain't convinced you're a crime boss, oh, I'll eat my hat. Follow him, Yerji, in case my extra incentive wasn't adequate. Yeah, I'll have one, boss. Good heavens, James. My next confession is going to be... The good Lord will understand, Helliston. It's Pamela's life we're talking about. It's not the good Lord I'm worried about. It's my expectations of myself. If any of these people were to harm Pamela, I realize now I would gladly destroy them. Gladly. Who am I? You're a good man in an impossible situation who will do what needs to be done to protect his family. So, no more self-flagellation. You've work to do. Now let's get on with it. Thank you, James. Well, 
There was never any chance Phoebe would have chosen a hotel. As for rooming houses, even though Ottawa is a small city with the Dominion government here, there are undoubtedly hundreds of them. Neither we nor our opposition could even hope to locate them all, much less check them, unless we could narrow the parameters. How? Try to think like Phoebe. She needed a safe place, a place where people would be sympathetic, willing to protect them. She doesn't particularly like or trust men. Hmm. Well? I recall speaking to a Mennonite colleague. He was telling me about what they call Magenheim, residents set up for single women who come to the city to work. This was Calgary, but stands to reason that with so many clerical positions available, there would be some such institutions here as well. Ah, now that's me, Heliston. I'll get onto the Ottawa coppers right away. We're getting close. I can feel it. I hope you're right, James. I just want to see Pamela. I need to. And you will, Elliston, soon. Well, my darling, what do you think? Wellington? Auckland? Christchurch? They all sound exciting. Perhaps we'll have to try them all. Perhaps we will. And here I was worried they wouldn't want us. It's all in the proper application of our ill-gotten gains. If I've learned anything over my career, it's that investment is a magic word. To New Zealand. New Zealand. Are you happy, my love? Deliriously. I want nothing more than to spend the rest of my life with you. And now I shall. Oh, oh my. Tears, my love? It's just, Abigail, I swear I'll prove myself worthy of your love. Worthy, dearest? You have nothing to. Damn. What is it, darling? Shh, don't look around. It's one of Gazzetti's investors. Did he see you? I don't know. Wait. He's leaving. He's... The telephone. We have to go, Abigail, now! Thank you, Mrs. Beasley, for your... help. Sure, the proprietors of your Magenheim seem a suspicious lot. Well, when it comes to male visitors, just very protective of their residents, with good reason, I suspect. How many is that now? Uh, six down, four to go. I hope the Ottawa coppers are having better luck than us. Indeed. All right, where's the next one? Uh, two blocks that way on Megalon. Yoshi, what is it? Is Minkoff you call? Gazetti find. They leaving now. Where? 26 Takaberry Lane. Four blocks, man. Drive, man, drive. <laughs> Please, Phoebe. Shouldn't you wait for them? We daren't. Gazetti's thugs will be here any moment, and we don't want to endanger any of you. As you wish. You'll write from New Zealand? Of course we will, darling. Thank you for everything. It was our pleasure. Going somewhere, Phoebe? Don't. I'd hate to have to hurt any of your friends here. Now move. Mr. Gazetti doesn't like to be kept waiting. The police are on their way. All the more reason for us to be on ours. After you, ladies. Ottawa Constabulary, drop your weapons and step away from the women. Not going to happen. Now step back and let us leave. <laughs> <laughs> 
or I'll kill them right here. I mean it. Get him in the car, Luca. Not today, you bastard. Ah! Shoot him, Marco. Shoot! Damn it. Pamela, the driver, look out. What? Who? Oh, my darling! Who are you? El Elliston? I'm... I'm... Phoebe! What have you... How, how could you? Oh, my God! Oh, my God! I'm afraid that there's nothing more that we can do, Mrs. Liddell. The bullets damaged multiple organs. She's dying. How long, Doctor? Hours, probably less. I'm so sorry. You did your best, Doctor. I have no doubt of that. Thank you. I must speak with her, despite what she did. You, you understand that, don't you, Elliston? You don't need my permission, Pamela. I'll be here. Thank you, Elliston. Hello, Phoebe. Hello, darling. You weren't hurt. Good. Only because of you. I owe you my life. Again. You would do the same for me. Damn! Why, Phoebe? Why would you do it? <coughs> Regina told me I had to recreate your memory. So I did. But you were stealing my name, my life. I had no other choice. You would never be betray Elliston. Just one of the things I love about you. Love? Me? From that first moment. But we could never. It, it's Pamela I love. The rest is of no consequence. I would have remembered. I was remembering. I know. But it would have been worth it. Even for that short time, I don't regret what I did. Arnold gave me the chance, and I took it. What about Elliston? Elliston is a good man, the best husband you could ever hope for, but he isn't me, and you know that, don't you? Oh, Phoebe, I want... Don't leave me. Never by choice, my darling. <coughs> then you do love me? Yes, darling. God help me, I do love you. I love you both. Good. Oh, good. I think, I think it's time. Phoebe! Phoebe! Alistair! Doctor, come quickly! Is, is she? I'm afraid so, Mrs. Liddell. Oh, oh God. Baby. Thank you, Doctor. Of course. I'll be outside if you need me. Depart in peace, our sister Phoebe. In the name of God the Father, who hath created you. In the name of Christ Jesus, who hath redeemed you. In the name of the Holy Spirit, who hath sanctified you. May you rest in peace and dwell forever with the Lord. Amen.
Oh, Williston, I'm so, so sorry. For what, my love? There was nothing intentional on your part. As for Phoebe, were I to condemn someone who was there for you when I wasn't, it would only be my guilt speaking. She gave her life to save the woman I love. For that, she will be in my prayers to my dying breath. As for Abigail. I was, I would never have chosen it, but you were so happy, Elliston. I can't deny that. Nor should you, my darling. A friendship like that is a rare gift. It should be treasured. <laughs> Come now. It's time to go home. Yes. But what about Phoebe? If you like, I'll arrange to have her buried at MacDougall. That way you can visit whenever you need to. Goodbye, my love. I'm sorry, James. What were you saying? Oh, nothing of consequence, Pamela. Nothing of consequence. But tell me, how are you? Really? Better. Truly. I'm surprised less each day, so my memory must be improving. Physically, I'm right as rain. The funeral was a bit of a trial, though. Sure if it wasn't. It was difficult. Constance's eulogy reminded me how much more there was to learn about Phoebe. How odd to feel the loss so strongly of someone it turns out I barely knew. Oh, uh, sure. And your Irishman can tell you it's heart first, then story. Thank you, James. You're a true friend. Ha! Ah, sorry I'm late. The organ installation is endlessly fascinating. Even Violet is impressed. Jose, coffee and um, three ports, if you please. So, have I missed anything important? No, my love. James was just soothing me with old Irish proverbs. <laughs> good, good. Well, I have wonderful news. Well, out with it, Elliston. My book tour has been postponed for three weeks. And that's wonderful how? Because, James, it gives Pamela and me the chance to do something we've been talking about for months. Oh, Elliston, the premiere? The very same, my love. I have the tickets right here. And what, pray tell, is the premiere? Only the finest passenger vessel on Lake Winnipeg. Elliston and I have wanted to visit the north of Manitoba ever since he accepted the ministry at McDougall. When do we leave, Elliston? We board at Selkirk on the morning of August 3rd and reach Warren's Landing at the northern end of the lake on the afternoon of the 5th. A couple of days to explore Norway House and environs, then back on board for the trip home. It sounds marvelous. Ah, oh, thank you, Josie. I told you it was wonderful news. Just what we need, my love. Some time away to make new memories. A toast, then. To me two favorite people, not me wife. <laughs> Calm seas, fair winds, and quiet laughter. May all these be yours. That's lovely, James. Another Irish proverb? Nah. Sure, and I couldn't spend so much time with a famous author and not have something rub off, now could I? <laughs> <laughs> oh, James. <laughs> Tonight, Interesting Theatre has brought you All Made of Sighs and Tears, 
an Elliston Liddell radio mystery by Tim Higgins. Featured in the cast were Barbara Best, Chris Caslake, Peggy DeGagne, Tannis Hewitt, Liz Higgins, Tim Higgins, John Cadell, Don Larson, Jock Warner, Bob Wilkes, and Susan Wilkes, with Glenn Hurst as the announcer. Sound effects and Foley were provided by Tim Stevenson and Peggy DeGagne. Music was arranged and performed by Dorcas Windsor and Rick Selwood. All Made of Sighs and Tears was directed by Tim Higgins. This has been an interesting theater radio production. <laughs>